Let's take a look at how to document this in Microsoft Word, as well as actually putting this stuff through your calculator. Now, let me explain what's going on here. These are the formulas, and these are values that I've used in my formulation. I've given you guys separate values to do, and that's because I want you to use your calculator. I want you to try to see if you get these exact numbers. And as we go down to other questions, it gets a little bit more complicated. So these numbers are, are the ones that I've used. You guys need to put these numbers in instead in your calculations. Now, when you do calculate power, you should get this many watts. And then when you calculate energy, you should get this much energy. So let's take a look at how to actually do this on your calculator, and then I'm gonna show you how to enter this stuff in using MS Word. There are a couple ways I can type in 420 milli anything, milliamps, millivolts, whatever. And one is just to write 0.42. That's what I do when I'm dealing with millis, and also kila. I just type in the kila. But as soon as you go smaller than milli into micro, and as soon as you go above kila, to the next step and the bigger and the smaller, and you're having to add a lot of extra zeros, you're gonna make a mistake. Always use engineering notation wherever possible. So as opposed to typing in 0.42, I'm going to use engineering notation. And to do that on my calculator, I'm gonna access that double E there. I'm not gonna type in, you know, uh, 420. So I'm gonna do 420. I'm not gonna type in times and then 10, and then use that symbol to do my exponent. There's a function for engineering or scientific notation. And in my calculator, it's a double E. Some other calculators have a 10 to the X. So to access that, I'm gonna hit second function, and then double E, I'm gonna do minus three, because it's milli. Now I have to multiply that by 12.4, 12.4 equals. Now that's my power. So I've got 5.208 watts. I'm just gonna leave that in my calculator. I'm actually gonna write that down also in my worksheet. Even though that's two, not two decimal places, the final answer has to be two decimal places. Now, I need that value in my next step. So I'm not gonna re remove it from my calculator. I've written it down, but I'm not gonna remove it from my calculator. I'm gonna leave it in there and I'm just gonna multiply it by 43.4. So I'm just gonna say times 43, Point four equals. Now this guy, I need to make that with two decimal places. So as opposed to writing 0.0272, I'm gonna write 0.03. Because in my lecture classes, I want students to use two decimal places. Okay, so how do you document this? Well, I've got an empty word here, and I'm gonna type this stuff in and show you how to do this. Now, the first thing is, I want to make sure I use a section with no spacing. Actually, you know what? Let's do that after to see what happens. Because if you don't, if you use this with spacing, uh, it doesn't really come out as well. So this is what I do. I don't worry about the superscripts and the subscripts. I do that after. So I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to go the power of the motor space equals space, the current of the motor times space times space. And then I'm going to say the voltage of the motor. And then I hit enter. I do that again, so the power of the motor equals, and then I'm gonna put the value in, in this case, it's gonna be easy, 420 space milliamps, pardon me, milliamps, and then space times space, 12.4 seconds, space seconds, enter again, and now I'm gonna say the power of the motor, again, equals space equals, okay, now I'm gonna type in five point, no, yeah, it's 5.208, watts. Excellent. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to click on this guy for single or no space. Now, I've got a couple different options here. I can just use my keyboard and I can say shift and I can um, highlight this and then I'm going to hit control plus and that makes it into a subscript. I can do that for each one of these, control plus and then go over here. I can just highlight it with my mouse if I want and then I can do that. I'm going to undo that all and I'm going to show you how to do it a lot easier. I'm going to highlight just the first one with my either with my mouse or I'm going to use um, shift and then uh, push over with my keyboard to go to the right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mouse over here. I'm going to hold the control key. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to I'm going to highlight all of these and then I'm going to keep my finger on the control key and I'm just going to hit plus. So once you get kind of using this, it'll just, you'll fly through it. It'll be a lot quicker than, you know, your first time through. Okay, that's beautiful. Let's do the next one. So the next one's going to be the energy of the motor, space, 
equals space. It's going to be the power of the motor, space times time. Enter, again, the power of the motor, space equals space, and I'm gonna type in this. Now, some of you guys may be wondering, because you know that I want two decimal places in my answer, but that's the final answer. So if you are going to be putting this into your secondary steps, even answering up here, that's okay, because the final answer is the number I'm looking for. But my point here is that, like I said it in that part about the video, that you have to keep this in your calculator. Okay, good. So in this case, that's gonna be watts space times. Now I'm gonna put in my case, 43.4 space seconds. Enter, and then again, the, the energy of the motor equals space. And then I'm gonna say 226.26. 0.03, and I'm going to leave it at that. Even though my calculator said 226.02700, I'm going to put in only two decimal places. Space joules. That is how you do it. Again, I'm going to highlight this first, then I'm going to put my finger on the control key, and I do this, and this, and this, and I hit the plus. If I put my finger on the control key, and I highlight this, I can't just grab this one. It won't let me do that. It grabs the whole line if you put your finger on the control first and then try and highlight it. So highlight your first character, then the control key, then do this, hold the control key down and hit the plus and you are done. Now you've got a really nice documented mathematical formulation and everything is consistent. Consistency is key. People that are reading your work will see your consistency and they'll be like, I want this guy on my team. I want to hire this guy. I want this guy working with me because he's accurate, concise, and consistent in everything he does.